Welcome to this mass media video on binomial distribution hypothesis tests. Now to start with, we're going to take a look at when we would do a binomial hypothesis test. Now for 8 level maths, you should be aware that there's two types of hypothesis tests that you need to know about. First is the binomial distribution hypothesis test, and the other test that we should be aware of is the normal distribution hypothesis test. Now for a binomial hypothesis test, you're going to be testing the probability parameter p here. So let's just note that down first. So we're testing the probability parameter. Okay, so the probability parameter, which we denote as p. Okay, and that's in the case of a binomial distribution hypothesis test. In a normal hypothesis test, you're going to be testing the mean parameter mu. Okay, so that gives us a key difference as well as to determine what test that we would be doing. However, for this video, we're only concerned about the binomial distribution hypothesis test. Now, the binomial hypothesis test, when you're testing the probability parameter, there will be certain words that will give us a clue that we should be using a binomial hypothesis test. So, for example, words such as probability, so probability, proportion, proportion and percentage okay so these words here are big clues that you may spot in the context of the question that will help you decide that you need to use a binomial hypothesis test okay obviously make sure that you use the situation and context of the question as well to help you deduce that you would be using a binomial distribution hypothesis test for example if we're modeling the situation as a binomial distribution then you also want to do a binomial hypothesis test. So that gives us everything we need there to deduce when to use a binomial hypothesis test. Moving on now to take a look at how we do a binomial hypothesis test. Now there's several steps that we need to follow when conducting a binomial hypothesis test. Now to start with here it's important that we define the parameter in the context of the question for a binomial hypothesis test. So the parameter we use is p and this is always the probability of something occurring. Okay, so define the parameter first. So when we say define the parameter, remember that's the p parameter, the probability parameter. Okay, so that's the first step there we should do when conducting a binomial hypothesis test. So next, what we need to do here is define our null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis. Now remember the null hypothesis is h0, that's the null hypothesis and our h1 here is our alternate hypothesis. Okay, so obviously as this is a hypothesis test we need to define our hypotheses. Okay, so that's our step two there conducting a binomial hypothesis test. Next, we want to define the test statistic x here in the context of the question, okay? So next we define the test statistic. Okay, and make sure we do this in context of the question here, okay? So x in context of the question. Okay, the next step we need to take here now when doing our binomial hypothesis test here is to write down the distribution of x under the null hypothesis here. Okay, so step four here, so we'd say under h0 and then what we'd do here is we'd give x and then the parameters of our binomial distribution. So that would be n here. And then remember, p is given in your null and ultimate hypotheses here. Okay, so that's the probability there. For step five here, we need to state the significance level. And remember, the significance level here, alpha, is given in the question. However, we should state it anyway to avoid any risk of losing marks in the question there. Okay, so state the significance level.
remember for the significance level, we use the alpha to represent that. Okay, so the Greek layer alpha represents our significance level. And we're nearly there now for our hypothesis test here. Two more steps to go. So for the penultimate step here, step six, we want to test our significance, or we could find the critical region. So test for significance. Or we can find the critical region. Okay. So that gives us step six there. And then finally, moving on from step six here, to conclude our binomial hypothesis test here, we just want to write a concluding sentence that links the acceptance or rejection of H0 to the context of the question. So write a concluding sentence here. So we write a concluding sentence that links, so linking the acceptance or rejection here, acceptance or rejection so acceptance rejection of H0 to the context of the question. Okay, so to the context. of the question. Okay. And once we've done step seven there, we fully performed a binomial hypothesis test. Okay. So that's how we fully perform a binomial hypothesis test. Moving on now to take a look at the critical region and actual significance level for a binomial hypothesis test. So the critical region is the region for which you reject the null hypothesis. Now for a binomial distribution, this is all the numbers of little x here, such that the probability here of our variable x is greater than or equal to little x, or the probability again of x here being less than or equal to little x. And what we're doing here is we're testing to see if these are less than alpha. Okay, remember alpha is our significance level, so less than alpha. Okay. Obviously, it depends what we're actually testing for in the context of the question as to which of these two we would use. Now, the actual significance level is the probability of landing in the critical region. So, if we just quickly define that, so the actual significance level is the probability here. London in the critical region. So the probability of landing in the critical region. Okay, so that's the definition there for the actual significance level. Now it might seem surprising here that this should differ from the given significance level. And indeed, for a normal distribution, it doesn't differ. However, because the binomial distribution is a discrete distribution here, that means there will not be an x value where the probability is exactly equal to the significance level. So in that case, the critical region always starts at a value that is less likely than the significance level to be obtained. Okay, So that gives us everything we need there for the critical region and the actual significance level. And that concludes this Maths Made Easy video on binomial distribution hypothesis tests.